Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Come to me, all you who are weary, you who are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Today we feel the burden of grief. But we gather in the name of Christ who gives us hope, who gives us rest. We are here to give thanks for the life of Cleo Ann Gilland Mayfield, to bear witness to the resurrection, and to seek comfort and hope one with another. God is with us in this place. So let us pray to him now. Gracious Lord, you are our refuge and strength. We know that you alone can turn the shadow of death into the brightness of the morning light. And so we pray that you would fill this place with your presence as we gather to remember and give thanks for Cleo. Help us turn to you now with hopeful and believing hearts. Lord, speak to us of eternal things, so that hearing the promises of Scripture, we may have hope and be lifted above sadness and grief into the light and peace of your presence. Send your Holy Spirit among us, we pray, that we might be comforted by your loving arms and filled with the life which knows nothing of death, life which is our sure hope in Jesus Christ. It is in his mighty name we pray. Amen. It's an honor to be able to speak at Cleo's funeral. Um, Lord knows, I think I've known her as long as I've been alive. She was, I'm going to say some, a few things that you already know. She was a remarkable woman. She led an exemplary life. But one of the many things I think could, be, could describe her, along with a lot of other words, is that she was dedicated. She was dedicated, Lord knows she's dedicated to George. And she's dedicated to her children, her family, this community, this church, particularly the choir, and she was just dedicated in just about everything that she did. 
This first reading is Psalm 104, verses 1 and 2, verses 33, verses 34, and is that, it is that, of a dedicated servant speaking to his or her God. Listen to these words, and you'll hear Cleo. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Hello, um, I'm Cleo's grandson, Andrew, and the second Old Testament reading is from Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 4. To everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Thank you. Well, uh, as you all know, my mother loved to be on the stage. And I figured it was the last thing that I could do for her was to get up here and do this. So I know through the strength of our Lord and my mom watching and all of your support and love, I think I can do this. Um, but um, I just wanted to say um, today we received a card from someone who dropped off a lovely cake, and it's on there. She said, Cleo was truly one of a kind in all the best ways. And I think that really kind of summed it up. So, um, but many ways that you all knew her. She had many roles, not just on the stage. She was mom, sister, aunt, grandmother, grandma, oma. She was named Caddy Ann by her brother who couldn't pronounce her name, Cleo Ann. She was Cleo to my dad. Mama Runo, as Rad and Mark remember. Um, she was good neighbor, good friend. She was choir director to children. She was choir director to adults. Um, I heard a story from Margaret Hughley yesterday that my mom was the choir director and the young teenage girls from Whitthorn used to walk down to the drugstore on their way to choir practice. Sometimes they'd get a little late because they got caught up talking to the boys. So Cleo was known one time to actually go to the drugstore and find them and put them all in her car and bring them down to church to go to choir practice. <laughs> she was not going to have a choir practice without them. Um, she was Ado Annie, of course, and Mark Bridges said she was never marrying the librarian to him, but yes, she was marrying the librarian, a role my father did not like because she had to kiss another man for eight measures. And she received the biggest bouquet of flowers in her life until this day uh, from my dad after that role. So um, she had a song written about her, maybe some of you knew, The Mighty Mrs. Mayfield. Where's Franny? There she is. Uh, Mr. Douglas, our, our beloved Mr. Beverly Douglas, wrote verses of this song. Um, the first time, I think, when she had a major surgery. And then every time something major happened in her life, he would show up with a new verse. And I have it, and I treasure it. And he even wrote a verse about me, too. But um, She uh, was caregiver for my dad for many years, as you all know. Um, she was tireless in that. She took her marriage vows very seriously in sickness and health, and she did that very well. She used to sing alto. She turned into a tenor. I won't tell you the term that she gave it, but anyway, <laughs> the choir members know. Um, we have several of her 
choir directors who followed her in the choir, and it's, we're just honored to have them all here. And Wilmeth, her organist, is here who played with her. So um, a lot of my friends sang in the choir as children. Uh, one of my friends, or two of them, say that she would tell them just to mouth the words because they didn't quite know how to carry a tune. <laughs> and they keep reminding me of this over and over, but I'm sorry for that. As a teacher, we would never humiliate children like that anymore. <laughs> she was a creative cook. She even had the store with Marianne McKnight for about five years until my father was hurt. Um, she was a saxophonist. She played um, the saxophone since she was in uh, high school. And my daughter is now a saxophone player and will also be a band instructor with any luck. And um, she was a drum major at, in her high school, and we have a great picture of her doing that. Um, she played in the Murray County Band with her saxophone. She was an accompanist for the choir. It's where she met my father. Her sister, she moved in with her sister because her sister didn't help finish paying for her college, so she moved in. She said, I'm moving in with you, and then her sister said, well, I can't play the piano tonight at the rehearsal for the Messiah. Can you go fill in? And by the way, there's a really handsome tenor who can take you home. <laughs> and that was my dad. And the rest was history. So my dad took her home and they went on several dates and, and they married shortly thereafter. What did my mother teach me? She taught me foremost, never tell a lie. So I'm going to try not to do that today. She taught me how to cook, how to sing, how to act, how to sew, and uh, most recently um, my father loved birds, as you all know, and my mother was um, forced to pick up a lot of the things that he couldn't do because of his accident, and picking birds from a net was her skill and her forte. And some of her bird friends are here today to attest to that. She could pick birds from a net, and even last fall when I was nervous because there was a bird that was, was a little bit harder for me, I'm not as an expert, and she came and helped me do that. So she was active up to the end. That's just what I want you to know. She taught me how to live, laugh, and love. She lived her life to the fullest, and she was always looking for fun. Um, she attended my daughter's graduation just recently, uh, you know, middle, uh, beginning of May. Um, so she was active up till the end, even singing here in the choir until May 21st. Uh, my husband and I always tuned in to watch her on Sunday morning, so thank you, tech crew, for doing that, because it really helped us out. She always taught me how to see the simplest beauty in the simplest things. How many of you have ever looked at a glass of iced tea and said, that is the most beautiful glass of iced tea? <laughs> My mother did that. About every time she ordered a glass of iced tea, it was the most beautiful glass of iced tea she'd ever seen. So I'd say that the Gift to be Simple song that we're going to sing uh, with the choir is perfect for my mom. It is a gift to be simple. It's a gift to know the simplest beauty and to slow down in all of our lives and to know that God created this beautiful world for us and we have to take time to notice. We have memories of Montreat singing. Um, life with George was always an adventure, um, as you know, and many people, it was always outdoors or in a musical setting with my parents. And she picked up and did most every hobby that he did, but she was not afraid to have her own. As I said, she was on the stage a few times. Um, <clears throat> she, um, uh, sorry, she was, um, she was just an amazing lady, and I think all of you knew it. Um, I asked for words for some of our close family and friends to describe my mom. That's how I'd like to end. Um, she was spunky, undeniable loving, funny, spontaneous, gracious, enthusiastic, fabulous. Many people often joked that when my father died, she had to write a book called Life with George. <laughs> well, guess what, Mom? Now there's a sequel, Life with Cleo. Thank you all for your support and your love for Cleo. This church meant so much to her. This is her family. You all are her family. Columbia is her family. And um, she, she and my dad started here in the beginning, so thank you all.
So my sister's better at this than I am. Um, I think uh, what Jim said about mom being a servant is the thing that I remember the most. Um, we all know that uh, the Mayfield boys like to play, the girls too for that matter. Um, and one of the things that mom always did for us was she was always there at the end of whatever that play was, whether it was going canoeing or going hiking or whatever, she would always just show up at the end of their day and get us home. Or when we'd been duck hunting in the middle of the winter with dad, she'd have a thermos of hot tea for us. Or, you know, there was just oh, so many things that she did for us. I was talking with, uh, with Brett Herman about uh, Sunday afternoons growing up. We used to have some great picnics and hikes and stuff. And Mom always had uh, everything organized and ready to go and was on top of things and just took great care of us. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really reading this. I can't, I can't see it anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, um, you know, she was also, she always welcomed people into her home, um, whether here or in North Carolina. Um, I'm going to miss that. When, when, uh, when Mark arrived yesterday, he got pretty emotional because he said mom wasn't there to welcome him into the house. And that's always what she did for everybody no matter who you were, whether she knew you or didn't know you, or whether you were a stranger, she just, she didn't know a stranger. She was always there for everybody. And um, that's what I appreciate most about my mom. So thank you. Appreciate all of you being here today.
Our New Testament reading comes to us from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Listen to the word of God. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall, we, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Today we are here to support and to comfort one another. We're here to share in memories of Cleo and to celebrate her life. And we're here to proclaim our hope in God. This is a sacred space because today in faith we believe that God, our creator, is here with us also sharing in these moments. God knows each of us by name. God knows the burdens we carry, and God is attentive to all that we need, promising to be with us in these moments of grief and beyond. He is our comfort. He is our hope. No obituary could ever hope to contain Cleo Mayfield, nor would endless words of remembrance be able to speak to the fullness of her 84 years of life. Though I only knew Cleo for a short time, over the past few weeks as the family has gathered to say goodbye, I was privileged to hear some of those really great stories. The stories about Cleo and what made her so unique. As you heard from Rad and from Rebecca, friends and family will remember her always put together. She had the best shade of lipstick on. She was always um, someone with diverse interests. She was a Renaissance woman. She uh, loved music. And she led the children, the youth, and the adult choirs here at the church, first alongside her husband George and later with Wilmoth. She had a knack for cooking, a love of travel, a fierce commitment to her community, to her church, and a pilot's license to boot. I just learned this week about what Rebecca was talking about, this phenomenon of, um, what is it, bird banding? I had no idea, and Cleo was a master at it. Each of you have your own anecdotes and insights into who Cleo was and what she meant to you. And each of you have been an important part of her life. So even now, in these moments of grief, remember this. We hand Cleo over into the hands of a good, faithful, loving God. A God who is our beginning and our end. Our hope in the midst of struggle and grief. And in faith... Committing Cleo to God's care, we trust that her suffering is now over. So live in this hope. In God, Cleo is sealed forever. And to, and to God, we too will one day go. So we trust that this parting is only a brief pause. We await reunion in eternity. We know that God's grace covers Cleo and each of us today and every day. 
Writer Frederick Buechner has this compelling definition of grace. He says that the grace of God means something like this. Here is your life. You might never have been, but you are because the party wouldn't have been complete without you. Here is the world. Beautiful and terrible things will happen, but don't be afraid. I am with you. Nothing can separate us. I love you. I just love that part. The party here on earth wouldn't have been complete. It wouldn't have been complete without Cleo. And now she is celebrating at the greatest party of them all. The great banquet we shall all enjoy one day in God's eternal realm. And yet even that knowledge does not heal the wounds of grief we feel. That is why God, through his son Jesus Christ, promises to be with us in our grief, never abandoning us, calling us to trust him, to love him, to make his love known to others. I want to close with these words from Jesus. It's one of my favorite passages in all of the Gospels. Chapter 14 of John. Jesus tells his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go there to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. Christ spoke these words right before he was crucified. This is our Savior the one who died and rose from the grave, that we too might overcome death. He has the final word today. And that word is hope. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And he raises all who follow after him to life eternal. So believe and be at peace. Because Cleo certainly is. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As the choir prepares to sing our anthem this afternoon, we'd invite folks who want to join. I think about what Rebecca just, you just mouthed the words, right? It's just, <laughs> um, singing is a gift to be simple today.
Let us join together in prayer. Oh God, when we go outside, we see what a beautiful world you have made for us. When we stay inside, we can see the beauty of what we have created, the beauty of what you made all through the earth is beauty and wonder. This was something that Cleo understood. She understood that even a glass of iced tea was a work of art. She understood that those wonderful Norwegian desserts that she made were really good for kids. We thank you for her life. We ask that you be with us, Lord, as grief seems to stick close to us. We ask that you help us take delight in each other to live selflessly and to live dependently so that we depend upon each other. That's been our heritage in this church where we can see by who is here today, the generations have passed down one to another, who we are and how we live together. So we ask, Lord, for your continued blessing for First Presbyterian. We ask your blessing on all who have gathered here to remember Cleo, to love her, to think about those times that they had with her. I haven't come across anybody in the last week who didn't have a story to tell. They were none of them the same, and they were all beautiful. So we thank you for that broad way in which she lived her life and walked into corners and places where others didn't go and seemed to understand things that others did not. She learned. She learned every hobby and sport that George had. And just being with George was a challenge, Lord, for her and for us sometimes. So we praise you for her patience and her diligence in living with George and being the loving couple that they were. And we praise and thank you for Rad and for Mark and Rebecca, their, their uh, husbands and wives and their grand, Cleo's grandchildren, who are a wonderful thing also. We give you thanks that their childhood friends have come here today to worship them, to worship you, and to be with the the Mayfields. My brother Houston was just about raised by the Mayfields. He went on every kind of Western trip you can think of, and they piled into those Jeep cars and rode out into the sunset. He took us around to show us owl nests and vulture haunts and lots of other things. He was a great teacher to me about nature and many other things. Cleo stands in, has been mentioned before, a veritable succession of organists and choir directors and youth choir directors that have been in our church. Many of them are here today to praise you and to remember her. We thank you for her service. When we would arrange VBS, you could always count on Cleo. She would work in the kitchen and do a good job at it. So, Lord, we are just so grateful to have been a part of her life. And we entrust you now with her soul. We know that she will be with others who have gone before in this church and will be a pleasant memory for those of us who had the pleasure of knowing her. And so, Lord, for these pleasant memories and for your care and kindness and grace toward us, we give you thanks and praise. And we remember the words that our Lord Jesus, taught, Jesus Christ taught us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Join me in the words of commendation printed in your bulletins. 
Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Cleo. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Following the benediction this afternoon, we ask that you would actually just take a seat, take a moment, um, and listen to what was a very important part of the worship service for Cleo, the postlude. Uh, Sometimes we just get up and start moving around, and Cleo loved for us to sit and enjoy it as a part of the worship service. So I'd invite you to take a seat after you receive the benediction. As we have celebrated Cleo's life and we have proclaimed our hope in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, go now to love and serve the Lord. And as you do, may the love of God the Father, the grace of Christ Jesus the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and every day. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. Please stand as the family 